Sailors, what's the most creepy sight you witnessed? Story 1. Oftentimes in the Navy, I'd stand on the fantail and watch the ocean. Once we had a hundreds, probably around 400 dolphins riding the carrier's wake. They followed us for three days. In the middle of the Pacific, it's so dark and there is so little light pollution that you can see reds, browns, and faint blues of gas clouds in the starscape. Another time I was watching the water at night. They say it draws you in, and it really does. You look at this pitch black void, with only the wake or turbulence of the water catching light, and intrusive thoughts of jumping in just naturally occur. It's mesmerizing, especially if you're alone. At night during one of these events, I saw blue glowing water, what I now know was bioluminescent algae. And inside this rather massive patch of blue glowing water were squid, which appeared to be maybe 15, 20 feet long. You could catch their outline in the light from the water. I stared at what was multiple squids passing by for minutes, what seemed like an eternity, and then the light started going away in the spot I was staring. There was still a lot of glowing water. We weren't headed out of it. But this patch gets darker and darker and darker until pitch black, a solid 15 seconds of intense curiosity. Suddenly, a lot of turbulence and a whale surfaces. It had snatched up all the squid. The whale cocked to one side and looked at the ship and our eyes met. I want to think. It studied the ship for a moment until just sinking back down until the glow of the water masked it completely. Story 2. Fresh out of college, I got a job in Cambridge, Massachusetts, or so they said, as an architect designing whatever. Ended up doing oil rigs, and one beautiful morning, there were sharks going under the main platform like always, but there were two dead sharks. Next morning, three new dead, then four the next day. Then a steady four or five a day for a week or two, they would float up under the see-through deck that looked much like a metal colander. The crew would have to punch them down so the current could catch them with a large pole. What made it really weird was they looked like they had heart attacks or died in their sleep, no marks or bites or anything. The guys on the rig had all kinds of theories. Then one morning, while in a room that was completely submerged and had a beautiful view as we sat in a meeting, everyone got to see the reason the sharks were dying, like viewing it on a movie screen. This octopus had made itself a home between the base and the deck. A shark was swimming by in a cruising fashion, and we see these tentacles grab it right in front of the glass and snap it like a glow stick. The marine biologist smiled and said, Octopus is literally doing that to entertain themselves, like because he can. The marine biologist lowered a dive camera, and this octopus was huge. The crew would joke about it thereafter. People would smoke on the deck at night, and people would say, don't let the octopus in. Seeing those tentacles was just insane for their length, and to think about how a shark is mostly muscle, and the octopus would just snap them, was kind of scary. Story 3. You know the feeling of being in a full stadium? Ten thousands of people all within sight of each other, all together? Multiply that by 100, and maybe that would be like the sea of sea mammals I was in the middle of, presumably on a bunch of food below, squid or something. There were half a dozen species of dolphin and half a dozen species of whales all together going completely crazy, busting the surface white, hundreds of thousands I'm guessing. Going into the forecastle of the small 42-foot lobster boat was like entering a different reality. Through the hull, you could hear. They were all talking to one another, and I could say you could hear them, but it was something else entirely. The bones in my skull and the rest of my body were vibrating at every frequency, heard and sub and supersonic alike, in alien rhythms and repeating patterns. A once-in-a-lifetime sensation lasted about half an hour. Highly recommended. Story 4. Giant spears plunging in and out of the sea. In the Gulf of Alaska, I have seen some crap. But one of the most terror-inspiring things I've seen is what can happen with some of the loose logs from the logging trade. Sometimes, when a big log gets loose from a raft, it becomes partially waterlogged and floats small end up. So you have this four-foot diameter telephone pole in the sea sticking up 40 feet into the air. 
no biggie, shows up on the radar, and is easy to spot. Now give that pole 20 years of floating around or so. It rots in such a way that it becomes sharpened to a perfect point by wind and waves and looks quite menacing. Now put it in a gale with 25 foot waves, 50 feet trough to peak, and it becomes a towering spike of death that shoots up from the sea every 15 to 20 minutes, out of nowhere, 60 feet into the air, only to plunge down into the dark depths, waiting to skewer some unsuspecting boat in a few minutes when it thrusts out of the ocean again. It is a genuinely terrifying sight, rare, but not so rare that I haven't seen two in one season. It's like the spiked dong of Neptune, looking for an opportunity to mess you up in a particularly terrifying way. Welp. This is the first reply on here about a phenomenon I'd never heard of, and it's honestly terrifying. Would never have imagined such a thing could happen or exist. Guess I'll just go ahead and cross off Sailor from my potential career list. Story 5 was on watch, and a lookout reported a ship on fire on the horizon. Looked through my binos and saw what they were looking at. Looked like a plume of flame really far away, just over the line of the horizon went and consulted the astro books and discovered that it was actually moonrise. The tip of the crescent was coming up over the astronomical horizon and was bright red-orange. Still very cool. I've also seen the Flying Dutchman illusion, dolphins swimming through bioluminescent waters that looked like glowing torpedoes, meteor hits near the ship, lightning hitting the mast, water spouts in the Caribbean, and the green flash at sunset. Many more things as well. Being at sea is just plain trippy. Story 6. I used to work on an Atlantic salmon farm a few miles out to sea. Best job I ever had. Creepy. We were around at the second site, the other side of the island to the main site, and this one was being left fallow for a couple of years, so just required some maintenance every now and then, slash was used for storage. I and my brother were there late afternoons to check some ropes or moorings or something. I can't remember when all of a sudden there was this really strong electrical slash copper smell and the place went silent. It was flat, calm, relatively clear skies so it wasn't a thunderstorm coming in. For some reason, this smell really freaked us both out and we both felt like we were being watched by something and there was a kind of strange feeling slash atmosphere to the place where it just seemed off. After a couple of minutes, it went away, and the atmosphere returned to normal. We were pretty glad to get back to the main site, but never experienced anything like that again. Really weird. Story 7 in the USCG was in the, the Eastern Pacific in February 2017. The bioluminescence at night was unlike anything I'd ever seen. Sailing the Caribbean, you get the glittering speckles in your wake, but in this water, the stern wake glowed very bright, almost made it pointless to be running the darkened ship. The bioluminescence was so much so that even fish in the water activated it. I remember a ghostly glowing cloud silently moving in toward us, where we were taking it all in on the fantail. Then, just as silently, it moved away. We could see larger glowing clouds, likely a school of fish, then a glowing streak, maybe tuna or something, come flying into the glowing mass, and the school would explode like fireworks underwater. Saw this occur a few times. It was amazing. Another time we were in the Caribbean, middle of the night at flight quarters. I was at the fire party, and we were staged on the F. Oxley. We were kind of bored waiting for the helicopter to come back. All of a sudden this massive meteor hurtles by overhead, completely turning night into day for a second. We were all in disbelief. The people wearing NVGs were a little ticked, though. Story 8. This was in the late 70s. We were in the South Atlantic near Antarctica, on an oceanographic research boat, in the middle of nowhere, and hadn't seen another ship in two weeks. A calm day with fog here and there, so we were sounding the foghorn as required. Not a pleasant experience on the bridge as your ears get blasted every 60 seconds. I was on the wheel when the mate said, Whoa, look at that. Out of a fog bank about 500 yards away, a two-masted topsail schooner suddenly appeared sailing opposite our course. All sails up and no one on deck. 
and absolutely no image on the radar. We tried hailing on the radio, but no answer. She ghosted into another fog bank and away from sight. It was one of those things that made the hair stand up on the back of your neck. The Flying Dutchman was the consensus of the bridge watch. Story 9. Standing on a carrier's fantail at night. The bioluminescent algae was sometimes bright enough at night. It provided normal level light if you were right at the lifelines. You'll never see the stars like we have. There are so many faint stars that just can't make it through the light pollution. It was a mesmerizing collage of twinkling lights. There was almost more starlight than black space they were in such a plethora. Once, while smoking in an exterior smoking area on the starboard side, I exited the ship's hull to see we were cruising about 25 knots over glass-smooth water. No waves, no ripples, but our wake. This is actually a bad omen, as the opposite of fair winds and following seas is no wind which left ye old sail ships motionless. Later that day, we had an emergency diesel generator fail and almost explode during routine testing. Once, while on watch in the engine room, I heard the high-pitched echoes of what sounded like someone pinging us with sonar. A while later, I heard the same sound in a much lower octave. I'm almost certain it was a whale close enough to us that I could hear it through the hull, as the engine room interior is under the waterline. A carrier truly defines her own path through the sea. We sailed straight through a high-powered typhoon. The waves attempted in all their might to splash over the fantail. Hangar bay doors were closed for safety because you could see the horizon rocking up and down 30 degrees. Extra overboard watches were posted, and all I felt was the ocean rocking me to sleep in my rack. No matter how small, cramped, smelly, or loud my rack and berthing may have been, that was, and shall always be, the best night's sleep I ever had. It was always a good day when you saw seagulls, as your next port of call was close at hand. Story 10 sometimes work on a fishing boat during the summers for a bit of extra cash, and here are a few of my stories that you might be looking for. Keep in mind that some of them are dark. 1. The floater. Whilst fishing during the night, we heard something hit the boat. Now, of course, sometimes it's just some wildlife that couldn't see it in the dark, but we still went to look. I shone a flashlight into the water, only to see a person's body, face up, floating there. Needless to say, I freaked the F out and nearly dropped the light. We reported it. Authorities came. We never found out what happened, but the theory we had was it was related to some sort of sinking due to the life jacket they had on. 2. The Fox this one's not so scary, freaky, or dark. We were fishing close to an island and saw something orange in the water. Now, my buddy thought it was just garbage until it moved its head up. Turns out it was a fox. It came close to the boat, and I grabbed it and brought it aboard. Poor thing must have been treading water for ages because it fell asleep in my arms. We released it on land after it had woken up. 3. Palatine Sighting giving away where I live here, but in the area, there's a legend about a ghost ship known as the Palatine, otherwise known as Countess Augusta or Princess Augusta. It's stated that the ship's burning mass can sometimes still be seen, and this is called the Palatine Light. We were out fishing. It was cold. We were all miserable. Then, a buddy of mine calls out that he sees another ship, and we turn. There, in the cold, we all swear that we see a ship aflame. We try to just chalk it up to the cold messing with our minds. Story 11. In the pitch black of night, in the middle of the vast emptiness of the sea, you see the stars filling the heavens, and more shooting stars than you would expect streaking to the earth with their fiery tails. As your eye draws down to the water, you find that somehow the ocean is darker and emptier than the sky. Your eyes strain for a glimpse of anything, but ultimately you only catch glimpses of strange and mysterious creatures lithely swimming just beneath the surface, occasionally peeking above the surface or triggering flashes of bioluminescence that disappear as suddenly as they appear. Story 12 Was standing topside watch on a dark night when the sky suddenly turned bright. 
For about three seconds, something was incoming that lit all the weather decks up like daylight. This sparked quite a reaction on the bridge and in operations. We were forward deployed during wartime, although not in a region where active fighting was expected. For a moment, people scrambled, fearing we had been targeted for a surprise missile attack. Then the sky went dark again, just as suddenly as it had begun, leaving us safe and alone again. Yet there was still a whole bunch of commotion on comms as people jabbered stuff that amounted to whiskey tango foxtrot. The only crew member who saw what had really happened was me. It's a meteor. It's a meteor. It's a meteor. Had to repeat the report several times before anyone paid attention. A meteor had come down almost directly above us and then broken up into three pieces as it burned up in the atmosphere. It was like a fireball. That put on quite a light show in the ocean on a moonless night at O oh dark, 30 in the middle of expletive nowhere. Astronomers call these bolides. It might even have been a superbolide, but it isn't on the list of recorded superbolides. We may have been the only ship that saw it. Based on the time of year and the location, it may have been one of the southern torrids, a meteor shower that's noted for producing fireballs. Not a whole lot of people ever witness a meteor that spectacular. By lucky coincidence, I got a good view of this one. Story 13. Creepiest would be underway on 31st October slash Halloween day, maybe 15 miles off the coast of Florida near Miami. Lookout sights a white houseboat looks like it's just drifting. So we get closer to our fast response cutter, 154, to make contact with them. Nothing. No one responded. Used the radio, loud hailer, and ship whistle. So Captain said, let's launch our small boat and go investigate. During the small boat mission brief, I reminded everyone that it was Halloween day, and this looked just like a horror movie storyline. So the boat launches and the crew gets on board. The doors are closed, but lucky open so the crew can investigate. The boarding team slowly conducts its safety sweep while looking for any crew on board. So here is a houseboat floating on the ocean with no land in sight abandoned. So the boarding team marked the vessel with spray paint and left it. Houseboat would probably be in Europe if it didn't succumb to the relentless sea. Another time in the middle of the night, between midnight and 3 a.m., we start tracking a target of interest. We clearly see someone and at least two others on a cabin cruiser. The vessel is unlit which is a red flag and steady speed. So we follow it and decide to launch the small boat for pursuit once they are close to U.S. territorial seas. We run our small boat with lights off as well and have night vision goggles to help us see them. I pull up with 1520 of the vessel and flip the blue lights and spotlight on them. No one is on the boat. All we see is a boat, no one standing up behind the helm or on deck. So I creep up closer and all of a sudden, we see an arm hanging over the gunnel. The boarding team starts yelling, show us your hands and stand up. No one moved. They were lying on top of each other. So we get the boarding team on board and start checking the boat for safety. We transferred all of the 26 migrants off the 35 foot boat on the fast response cutter. 154. Story 14. I spent my naval career in the shipyard, assisting with refueling the reactors, on an aircraft carrier as a power plant chemist, nuclear machinist's mate, and radiological controls tech slash supervisor. One of the amazing things, I got an up-close view of old fuel rods being pulled out of a reactor vessel and new ones being lowered into it. Honestly, really cool. And from what I've heard, refueling a carrier is the most complex engineering challenge the military faces. It is a crazy process from a logistics standpoint. One of the saddest, not sure if it's necessarily creepy, things. A 30-something year veteran of the shipyard made the choice to do a confined space entry the wrong way, alone, towards the end of the day, without fall protection, and he fell and died in a void space in one of our reactor plants. He didn't die immediately, so someone heard him initially screaming for help. They told someone, and we all had to go down and search the bilges. They found his body within the hour and had to rig him out of the void and then use a crane to lift him out of the plant. 
he was only a couple of years away from retirement. Another sad thing that I'm very passionate about, the Navy's nuclear community has a rampant self-deletion problem that has been swept under various rugs for decades. Every Navy nuke knows or knows of multiple fellow nukes who have committed self-destruction. I personally don't have enough fingers to count the number of self-deletions I was exposed to in six years. NBC did a piece on it recently, but it fell short by not diving into the self-slaughter rate of nuclear sailors and sailors in general on active ships and submarines. The rate the article quotes is three times the national age-adjusted rate in the U.S. I bet the number would be even higher if they could find statistics on the number of nukes who completed the pipeline and still committed harakiri. I bet those numbers are very difficult, if even possible, to find. Because, like I said, it gets swept under the rug. Story 15 My favorite site was in the summertime off the northern coast of Iceland. The sun was up for the whole midnight four watch that required I sit on the bow with a pair of binos looking for obstructions. There was a slight chill, so I brought up a thermos of hot tea, however the wind was completely absent. The sea was glass flat all morning as I stared mostly at the beautiful cliffs on the mainland. Early on, some ripples started appearing, then black figures. I realized they were mother minke whales with calves. I must have seen 100 that morning, something I'll never forget. As far as freaky goes, middle of the night a group of six of us were on the bridge of a ship in the Atlantic. The closest land was hundreds of miles away. All of us saw a green flash go up, then back down onto the water, probably two, three miles off the port side. We never were able to figure out what it was. Story 16. My dad was competing in a marlin fishing comp near Weepa the pointy top bit of Australia, battled a fish for four hours, they catch and release. As it neared the boat, the crew readied to haul it on board, and a camera team went in for the tight shot, hanging right over the edge. The marlin breached the water, and then a huge great white shark breached under it, full length above the water, inches from the crew's faces. The shark took the whole marlin, plus a big bite out of the boat all caught on camera. Everyone was pretty shaken for a while afterward. I'll never forget the pics of the bite mark, exactly like people do to crackers, with individual tooth marks, but a meter plus wide. Edit to add. Sorry, the footage was the property of the TV station that was filming. I have an old VHS tape of it somewhere. I should get it digitalized. I'm betting there are plenty of similar incidents on YouTube, though. Those fishing boats carry rifles for a reason. Story 17. I was a new deck officer still in training on board an exploration ship. The officer of the deck was visiting, augmenting officer, from a similar ship, so I had to stay on the bridge to help them handle some of the particular oddities of our ship, even though I was still getting seasick back then. It was the night watch, and I horribly sick and curled up on the floor of the head, bathroom, in the back corner of the bridge. The officer of the deck must have thought I'd gone completely crazy because they'd hear me vomit my guts out, flush the toilet, and then start laughing with joy and wonder. The toilets flush with seawater and we were going through a patch of bioluminescence. Every time I threw up and then flushed the toilet in the pitch black little room, the bioluminescent organisms would flash making an amazing fireworks show in the toilet bowl. Story 18. When I was in high school, my dad bought a sailboat, Pearson 323, in South Florida. We hopped on it and sailed it across the Gulf of Mexico for a few days to get it up to the panhandle. Got up one morning, and we were in a thick fog. Couldn't see more than 40 talons off the boat. I heard this low hum in the fog. Sounded really creepy and pretty unnerving. Turns out it was a weather buoy. We also had an old Hobie cat that we'd sail around on. It had two trampolines joined in the middle. Me and Dad sailed almost the length of St. George's Island, and coming back was almost completely becalmed. Dad didn't want to ditch the boat somewhere random on the island, so we're heading back at barely half knot. Couldn't see them, but heard dolphins surfacing around us. Then one, the dolphin surfaces right in the middle of the two hulls, 
and sprayed Dad in the butt. I was dying laughing, 